Hello, I'm Donald Leggett, and welcome to the latest London Southeast CEO interview. I'm joined by Duncan Anderson, CEO at Tickmill, the futures and options trading platform for sophisticated retail investors. Access to technical trading techniques like futures and options were once only available to hedge funds and city traders. Now companies like Tickmill are making futures trading available to a broader retail audience. Welcome, Duncan. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Donald. It is a pleasure, believe you me. And how are you today, Duncan? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad, thanks. Fantastic. Okay, today we're discussing futures and options. In America, they're, they're widely used by uh, retail uh, investors. Up to a million and a half of them use futures and options, but not so many in the UK and Europe. Is that your vision uh, uh, for futures and trading, you know, for, for retail uh, investors to start using them over here? Well, I was, I was uh, fortunate enough to have actually worked on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange back in the 90s. And uh, indeed, uh, our, our Tickmill founders started their trading careers with futures and options. So to some extent, it's, it, it's really sort of embedded in our DNA. Um, but there's been a really real transformational shift in the industry that now gives investors access to, to these markets uh, you know, uh, that you wouldn't have had back in those days. Uh, and 2021 is for sure heading in that direction. And uh, you know, for the UK, for Europe and beyond, I really think uh, these, these markets are actually sort of uh, going to increase exponentially. Uh, but maybe it's just worth explaining you know, that a, a future is simply a contract that allows an investor to buy or sell an asset, you know, like a, like a stock index, a, a currency or a commodity like oil, uh, that gets settled at some point in the future. And these transactions uh, are done on regulated exchanges and, and this gives significant security to the investor itself. Um, I think Tickmill's, you know, as an established broker, it's, uh, it acts as a sort of destination point for traders. And we've got a, you know, a significant product base, very competitive pricing. And if you've not really tried futures or options up until this point in time, it's, uh, it's a really opportune moment, actually, to have a look at this asset class. OK, so let's take a holistic overview of uh, 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 futures and options trading. What kind of opportunities uh, does it bring uh, uh, to the investor? Well, they really sort of give uh, an investor this sort of value add element to uh, an existing portfolio they may have. I mean, there are a number of facets uh, to the future. So one, one is, uh, and I'll get it out of the way quickly, is, 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 is leverage, but it's a really important uh, element as far as the future is concerned. So you only need to place a small deposit with your broker. Uh, it's just an efficient way to utilize your investment capital if you are accessing a, a, a future or an option. You can speculate short and long term on a, you know, on, on a diverse range of assets. I, you know, I mentioned stock indexes, but there's commodities, currencies, uh, and, and lots of different uh, uh, products available to utilize. You can hedge an existing investment portfolio. Um, you can actually also have access 24 hours to the markets, which allows you really to respond immediately to any change in, in market conditions. Okay, you say there's a mini revolution taking place, which all sounds quite intriguing, and it's started in America and it's coming across the water over here. Um, where does Tickmill fit into those changes? Yeah, so it's a really good question, Donald. It's, um, I mean, investing, like I said, has become far more accessible to a much wider audience, and and Tickmill's sort of been able to connect our users. Uh, with a diverse number of futures exchanges, and, and that goes from the CME, uh, the Mercantile Exchange, all the way through to the small exchanges, which is one of our newest exchanges out there. We've also partnered uh, with some of the sort of you know really world class technology providers, including CQG, which is it's a platform provider, and they've been around for thirty years uh, and really has some cutting edge functionality uh, to it. Uh, it allows also us to connect you, the investor, to third-party platforms. So, you know, if you're looking to pipe your trades through us, you may not need to actually change your platform provider. Um, 
all of this is actually available on the website. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it's very accessible. Okay, so at a practical level, uh, is that where I should be advising people to go? Should we, we be putting people, if they want to educate themselves, should they go to your website? Uh, you know, how do they start trading? And they, you know, once again, is that, is, is that something you find easily accessibly on your website? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we spent quite a lot of time and effort actually ensuring that uh, the website uh, we, we've got gives you access to a huge amount of educational material. Uh, we've got in-house writers, analysts, and they've got views on, you know, identifying opportunities. Uh, we've got data-driven insights coming from some of our partners and, and lots of other sort of freely available information. I mean, all really at your fingertips. Um, We've, we've made it as easy as possible to open and fund an account, uh, get access to your platform and, and trade either from a desktop or from a mobile app. So you can really sort of keep in touch uh, with the markets wherever you are. Is it, less the, is, is it less daunting than you think to, to start trading, Duncan? I mean, for example, how much would the, the minimum that you actually have to have to, have, uh, to start, uh, to start uh, trading? Yeah, I mean, I mean, so, some of the most popular markets include the S and P 500, which your your viewers will be fully aware of, uh, the Nasdaq, uh, and, and no doubt, you know, sort of uh, uh, the Dow Jones. You know, so if if you are looking to trade, say, the micro Dow Jones contract, it will give you exposure to approximately about sixteen thousand yeah, dollars of those thirty stocks, and all you need to do is is simply deposit a small percentage of that. Uh, that's roughly 6%, so $1,000, which gives you full exposure to the market. Uh, and the cost of trading that contract, um, you know, whether you go long or short, uh, is, is around $1. So it's very cheap and very, uh, very effective. Okay, putting traders first is your motto, a good motto. Uh, so what do, you, what do your traders look like in demographic terms, in affluence terms? And in what way do you put them first? Yeah, um, I mean, first and foremost, uh, I mean, it all starts with great customer service. Uh, simply, I mean, we want traders to succeed, and that's another one of our sort of mottos. Uh, and that allows them to have a completely seamless experience with us. Uh, as I said, we've got great conditions, some of the best actually in the industry, uh, and we've some top value add tools that you, that, you know, anyone can get access to. But as far as clients are concerned, they, I mean, they range across all ages, in fact. Um, and from those new to investing to the tech savvy quant looking to automate a trading strategy all the way through to small corporates. So what we've sort of created is a, is a concierge sort of type uh, approach to customer service, uh, you know, with a super fast response rates and, and, and uh, a voice at the end of the phone, you know, that has the knowledge and experience to offer valuable service to our clients. So putting traders first would definitely be a customer service uh, tick in the box as well. I, I like to think so. And I mean, that's, you know, that is one of, one of, one of our sort of great assets, I believe. Okay, um, good answer. I like that answer. How much leverage uh, does your product allow? And how have you designed the platform to mitigate that risk? So, I mean, if we take that micro DAO example again, yeah, so um, you're talking about 16 times leverage. And what I mean by that is it's, it's 16 times the amount you need to deposit with us, uh, very simply, yeah? Uh, and this is useful, but not excessive. So, so it's an extremely efficient tool uh, to get the same level of exposure for a fraction of the price and really allows you to sort of harness your un, un, unutilized funds uh, in, in other ways. Um, of course, there are risks, but, but given the right conditions, uh, it really is a potent tool. But we've also implemented some sort of leading software solutions that incorporate auto liquidation. So if the client uh, gets into a position where, where there may be some sort of negativity involved, it actually stops uh, a negative if, if, the, if the trade goes against the client. Correct, yeah. So this stops you from ending up with a negative balance and protects your funds. I mean, it's, it, it's quite unique and it's allowed actually Technol to continue to push technology boundaries for all its clients. Okay. 
So we've 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 been through a number of these different points, but perhaps if you could pull pull the different strands together for us, why should I trust Tickmill with my futures trades? Why you? Why uh, rather than uh, some of the competitors? Well, I mean, Tickmill is a is a fast growing, dynamic global financial services provider. Um, we we're actually physically located next door to the Bank of England. We're regulated uh, by the UK's FCA. Uh, and, and a number of uh, re regulators uh, in other jurisdictions globally. We've got about 160 different countries that we service. There are 40,000 active clients globally. Uh, and we're probably transacting somewhere in the region of 10 million trades a month, uh, which roughly equates about $150 billion of notional interest. So it's, um, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a large business for what we do at the moment, yeah. And uh, our trading conditions mean that, that you know, when, when a client comes to us, they actually tend to stay with us. And I think that's sort of testament to the, the great customer service. We've got the infrastructure, the technology rollout, uh, and all these sort of factors that sort of drives our business forward. And finally, last question, if we were to investors find Tickmill and the product portfolio we've been discussing? Well, we've got a great new website, as I mentioned, it's www.tickmill.co.uk. Uh, and it's got lots of interactive features, uh, you know, including video content, analysts, uh, news from a you know, host of informative uh, links. And, um, you know, if you need more information, there's chat functionality, email, phone, uh, and this sort of connects with our, you know, really great customer support team, uh, who will be gladly to help you in any way they can. Uh Duncan Anderson, CEO at Tickmill here in the UK. Uh, thank you so much indeed for speaking to us today. That was very informative. I've learned a lot. Thanks for watching and do stay safe.